Well, it was an emotional moment at Mission Control. After 12 and a half years and billions of kilometers, the Rosetta probe crash landed, deliberately, on a comet. Scientists say they're sad the mission is over, but they are thrilled by the incredible amount of information that the probe has gathered on its long journey through space. Now, as you might expect, our Johanna Wagstaff has been following that journey through space mm -hmm. uh, from right down here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Johanna, walk us through, if you can, some of, the, some of the journey. Well, it really has been an incredible journey for our robotic pioneer that began with its launch in 2004. And I've got some pictures to show you the journey that it would have taken over 10 years to finally rendezvous with Comet 67P. And, and that's when it joined the gravitational orbit. It spent two years studying, along with its lander Philae there, you can see, uh, studying everything it could about the comet up close and personal. Uh, the Comet made its closest approach to the sun back in 2015 with Rosetta there to watch it all. And now that comet is swinging back around. It's about in line with Jupiter's orbit and it's just too far away for the sun to continue to power the solar panels. So like all good things, Rosetta's mission has come to an end. Uh, in its final moments, Rosetta actually beamed back as many pictures and data as it could uh, before it made that crash landing. With the amount of gravity on the surface, though, it was more like a gentle touchdown in a pre-planned site where they could uh, study as much as they could uh, about uh, an area that uh, contained these structures called goosebumps, where they uh, think many many other mini comments might have uh, landed before. So scientists continue to study the data today. Uh, but I think many people, like myself, sort of became attached to this comet over time, sort of giving it in its lander uh, personality. So as I show you pictures out of Mission Control, this was a big moment for everyone. And I think it will go down in the history books. People will continue to talk about uh, the information that it gathered. Take a listen, though, to the director of operations from the European Space Agency. He kind of sums it up nicely. I think this has been a very emotional moment today. Uh, I hope we will not fall in a collective depression. Uh, and the uh, best way to avoid this is party tonight. And uh, in only 20 days from now, we will be landing on the surface of Mars. So there's life beyond Rosetta. So, Sarah, the uh, mission control will be partying tonight. You heard it here. <laughs> before they get on with their next mission. And partying because they see the Rosetta mission as a tremendous success. So let's talk about why. Yeah, it really was. Going down in the history books for so many reasons, starting off with the fact that we orbited a comet for the first time, uh, sort of reaching that gravitational embrace at about 20 kilometers from the surface. And then we landed on a comet. Uh, that Philae lander sort of landed. It touched down. It didn't quite get its harpoons out to lock it to the surface, so it tumbled a few times, ending up in a shadow. Still sent back some data before shutting down. The big one, though, we actually discovered uh, organic compounds on the surface of the comet uh, and basic amino acids, but the building blocks for life, and that was really one of the big parts of this mission. Rosetta was named because the comets are thought to be part of the original solar system, and knowing that it contains these amino acids means that that may be how we got some of our ingredients on Earth uh, centuries and, and, and millions of years ago. So lots of data that we're still getting from uh, Rosetta. And I have to show you, this was the final picture, about 50 meters from the surface, uh, signing off. But Rosetta will not be forgotten. One last shot. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Johanna. You're welcome.